Hi, I'm Sarah and today I'm going to give you a brief guide to fasting and why people choose to do it for health benefits and also why people choose to use fasting to lose weight. I'm going to go through a little bit of the biochemistry briefly so that you can understand and then I'm going to explain different methods of fasting because one size doesn't fit all. I've just recently finished a 50 hour fast and for some people that might seem terribly extreme, but it is something that I've gradually over the years learnt how to do. Also, the real magic with fasting happens in the long fasts, which are the ones that are about three to five days long. But you can get lots of benefits from the shorter fasts. So briefly, here are some of the benefits that you can get from fasting. First of all, reduced inflammation and oxidative stress, which is free radical damage. And this slows down aging and prevents many diseases which are associated with inflammation. Fat loss, which is the main reason many people choose fasting, because you effectively use your own body fat for fuel in the form of ketones. Fasting and intermittent fasting also help to lower blood sugar and insulin, which can manage conditions like type 2 diabetes and other conditions related to insulin resistance, such as polycystic ovaries. Fasting also improves brain function by increasing something called BDNF, which is brain-derived nootropic factor, which helps grow new brain cells and synapses, and also helps with depression. Fasting helps fight hunger, sugar cravings, and for many people, emotional attachment to food. When you fast for longer, it stimulates something called autophagy, which is a process where your healthy cells destroy old dysfunctional cells and proteins and use them for energy. It's a bit like trash disposal or spring cleaning your cells. So this would be mainly for fasts that are longer than 48 hours and up to five days. When you fast and your body runs out of liver glycogen, which is effectively animal starch, so glucose, and in the liver there's about 100 to 150 grams of glycogen and this will be used up in about 24 hours shorter if you exercise and then your body will switch to start using ketones as a fuel which is actually a less inflammatory and more efficient way to make energy in the body ketones are made from acetyl coa mainly from beta oxidation of fat ideally your own body fat but also from fat that you take in but when you're fasting Hopefully it will be your own body fat. When you fast, insulin is low, which means ketone body production or ketones is encouraged, whereas when insulin is high, it inhibits the production of ketone bodies. These ketone bodies then travel around in the blood to feed the tissues which prefer or can use ketones, which will be muscle, the heart and the brain. There are some cells, such as red blood cells and some neurons which are unable to use ketones as fuel but there's always going to be an amount of glucose in your body so when you fast and start to use ketones it frees up the glucose which is there for cells which actually need it the longer that you fast the more deeply into ketosis you'll go so one of the benefits people obtain from fasting is being in a ketogenic state which is a separate state to autophagy which i'll come to in a moment some people are worried, won't I lose muscle and waste away when I'm fasting? In fact, this isn't true because fasting bo boosts growth hormone that promotes neuroprotection and regeneration. Also, growth hormone protects against muscle catabolism or breakdown, but it also protects brain cells. As I mentioned before, fasting produces ketones or ketone bodies, which are muscle sparing. However, if you are stressed during your fast, say drink too much coffee, too much is going on in your life, this can raise cortisol which is catabolic. Another situation is if your body's struggling to use the ketones that it's producing, it can then break down protein to make glucose which is done via a process called gluconeogenesis in the liver. But in general, most people find that when they fast, they actually can gain more muscle later once the body has produced more growth hormone. Autophagy is a perfectly natural and normal process in cells and it's important for recycling and getting rid of damaged cellular components which could be proteins or damaged cells or even precancerous cells and it happens in response to cell stress 
or damage. And Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2016 for his discoveries on the mechanism of autophagy. So it's a very valid and well understood scientific process, although we're still continuously learning more about it. Under situations where there's energy abundance, mTOR is activated, and this is important for cell growth, well, all cells, including cancer cells, but particularly muscle. So mTOR isn't anything bad. You just don't want mTOR to be continuously activated. So that would be in a situation where there's abundance of food or nutrients. So mTOR is triggered by glucose, insulin, and amino acids. On the other hand, if you look down the other side of the pathway, when there's nutrient scarcity, such as fasting for longer than 20 hours, mTOR is inhibited and AMPK is activated, which promotes autophagy. So this is the state where the cells start to clear out debris, damaged cells and weak cells. So what are the benefits of autophagy? They're quite extensive, and these include improved immune system function when you fast for longer than three days, anti-cancer, anti-aging, reduced inflammation, which is important for diseases, which there are many, which have inflammation as one of the main driving causes. So this can be heart disease, chronic pain, certain kinds of arthritis, and many, many more. There's also the removal of old, weak and damaged cells, which effectively drag your body down, and also the removal of denatured proteins and other cell clutter, which are a particular problem when they start to build up in the brain and are linked to several neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, but there are others as well. There are different types of fasts, and because we're all different, one size doesn't fit all, so you need to choose the right kind of fast for you. Particularly if you're new to it, it's not a good idea to dive straight into one of the five-day fasts, although some people do like to rip off the plaster all in one go, whereas most people like to peel off the plaster um, gradually. The most straightforward is the 24-hour fast. This is the most basic way, and you can have one meal at a time which suits you and then break your fast 24 hours later. Many people choose a meal at about 6 p.m. in the evening and then eat again at 6 p.m. the next day, but some a different time may suit you. The other alternative would be something like a 16-8 or a 24, where you would fast for 16 hours, then have a feeding window of 8 hours, which would be the 16-8, or fast for 20 hours and have a 4-hour feeding window. Another option is the one meal a day, where you eat once a day. This is called OMAD, and this involves fasting for about 22 hours and eating your food in a one to two hour time frame, usually in the late afternoon or early evening. And some people actually eat in an OMAD style every single day, so they're effectively just eating one meal every day. So they're fasting continuously and breaking it once a day. A 36 hour fast, so this is where you abstain from eating for a whole day and then another 12 hours the next day. The way you plan this is up to you. The next kind of fast would be the 48 hour plus fasts. So these are the the gems, or the, this is where the magic happens, because these ones will make you enter into a deeper phase of autophagy, as well as burn a lot of body fat. After about five days, it's the law of diminishing returns. So most people fast for five days and find that after that it becomes stressful and they can become catabolic. So that would be when they start to break down mus muscle tissue. So here are some basic fasting tips. There's many more, but I'll give you some now to get you thinking about it. So first of all, you need to drink water with some salt and electrolytes to prevent dehydration. Black coffee, green tea and black tea won't break your fast, but too much caffeine can raise catabolic stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, which can start to break down muscle and also too much cortisol and adrenaline can stress out the thyroid gland, which will then lower your metabolism. But again, this is about planning your fast and planning um, what you drink during your fast. Also, mentally, if you remind yourself throughout your fast that you're doing something beneficial for your health and burning body fat, this is if you need some self-motivation, if you feel as if you can't carry on and you're desperate to eat something, just keep reminding yourself why you're doing this and the benefits you're going to get. It's important to manage stress while fasting 
and you can use things like meditation, yoga, or whatever you find relaxing. When it comes to the end of your fast, this is mainly the longer fasts. You need to end it with something like bone broth or a small meal like eggs and avocado. It's not a good idea to break your fast with carbohydrates because even though fasting manages insulin blood glucose, you do become a little bit insulin resistant during a fast. Therefore, the carbs are, are not advisable as your first meal at the end of a fast. Neither is meat because it's quite difficult to digest. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and listening. If you want any more advice or support, please get in touch.